I spied this jaybird, watch that maiden sing And listen to the wine that birdie drank She swept the gloom right out of the room And I knew what would be my fate Yes, I knew what would be my fate I did proceed her favor, tried to gain For her to join me here upon this stage With Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. This week on the Sweetwater Minute, we're joined by Jim Lauderdale. Jim, it's such a pleasure to have Thanks, you here. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks for having me. It's Absolutely. great to be here. Absolutely. Absolutely. You were here this morning. Yes. Uh, you came in with Royer microphones and Mojave microphones. Yes. And did a demo for the uh, the sales engineer that they were uh, raving about. Well, we had a great time. I brought uh, some of the best bluegrass players in Nashville mm -hmm. up here, and um, it was just a blast. Yeah, yeah, incredible music and great players. Oh, it, it's great. I'm spoiled being in Nashville with all these great guys. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. The studio here is, is packed full of Royers and Mojaves, and they were capturing great sounds as well. So yeah. fun stuff, fun stuff. I'll tell you, those Royer and Mojave mics, they're, they're terrific. Randy Coors, mm -hmm. my producer, uses them. And uh, I've known Dusty Wakeman for years and then met John Jennings. And uh, right. we're really pleased with him. Yeah, yeah, great sound of mics. Yeah. Great sound of mics. So you've had an incredibly varied career. You actually started early on on drums, is that correct? I did. I started out on drums as a kid and then moved to banjo uh -huh. and then rhythm guitar. And I started writing more and, and branching out from bluegrass to other types of things. Grew up listening to rock and blues and every R&B and soul. Right. And uh, But I, my goal was to be a bluegrass banjo player. Hmm. But I knew after a while I was never going to be another Earl Scruggs or Ralph Stanley or Bill Keith or Bela Fleck. So I just started playing rhythm and around that time I was writing more and more and, mm -hmm. and uh, then Eventually got a record deal finally. Right. And I've had several deals. Dusty Wakeman and Dusty actually produced a couple of albums for me in the mid 90s mm -hmm. on Atlantic Records. And uh, so I've been, I've, I finally, after years and years, uh, was able to start doing bluegrass records. And my first two were with Ralph Stanley. Mm -hmm. And then Randy Kors has been producing my last uh, five bluegrass albums. Right. And uh, so we're just going to keep going from right. there. And I'll, I'll go back and forth between kind of eclectic country and soul music and rock and, mm -hmm. and bluegrass, kind of do it all. Right, right. What we call Americana. There you now. go. There you go. Yeah. So what, what's the attraction of bluegrass? What is the drew to that style of music? You know, the first time I heard Foggy Mountain Breakdown, mm -hmm. it just floored me. It was one of those things, you know, where, where you have those... Songs. It was like when I heard the Beatles for the first time when I was six. Right. It just did something to me. Right. When I, when I first heard that, when I first heard Muddy Waters, when I first heard George Jones, you know, you. It's one of those things where you know where you were when you first heard those sounds and those songs. Right. So it was like that with bluegrass, and it just really uh, took a hold of me and uh, never let go. Right. Right. You mentioned some of the uh, the more eclectic kinds of things that you do. Uh, some of the groups you've worked with, Don of the Buffalo. How yeah. Did you, uh, how did you make that happen? <clears throat> well, uh, through Merle Fest and at a festival called Sewanee Spring Fest mm -hmm. was how I kind of got introduced with to them, and uh, they were kind enough to ask me to sit in a few times, and then I did that several times, and I and I just proposed the idea, hey, you know, maybe we should do an album together, and they agreed. Right. And uh, so we uh, did a record together. And as a matter of fact, this weekend I'll be going to Sewanee Spring Fest and, mm -hmm. and we'll do a set together. So several times a year we do They have a, a festival up in New York, uh, the Grassroots Festival mm -hmm. uh, in, in near Ithaca. And so uh, I do that every year. And um, we do these festivals in Florida and, and wherever. And so I. I get to do a whole set or, or sit in with them. I love them live. Right, They're right. just so great. 
Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Another really interesting project uh, that you were involved in is the uh, the American Beauty Project. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about that. Well, I when I was in high school, I I got turned on uh, to the Grateful Dead, listening to American Beauty and Working Man's Dead, and heard them live at Duke University, and um, it, it just all there was something about the songs and the playing that just also, it just really captivated me. Mm -hmm. And then years later, um, when I was doing the first record with Ralph Stanley, I uh, got a, in contact with Robert Hunter and said, hey, I'm doing this project. I know mm -hmm. you're a fan of the Stanley Brothers. Would, could we write some? So he sent me uh, a couple of lyrics and I sent him the melodies back and we started like that and he came to Nashville for about three months mm -hmm. and uh, we wrote about 33 songs and then I condensed those and, and did a record called Headed for the Hills and um, then did an electric record after that and used James Burton and Al Perkins, two of my favorite, uh, great, you know, lead player and steel right, player. Right. And um, then we've done two bluegrass records together, and Randy Kors produced uh, both of those. The, the latest one's called Carolina Moonrise. And uh, I also have an album in the can of songs we wrote that I recorded with the North Mississippi All-Stars and Spooner Oldham and Dan Penn, and that record is called Black Roses. I think it's going to come out in the fall. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's great. Look forward to that. Thanks. So as a as a, a bluegrass, obviously a fan, an aficionado, and a great bluegrass player yourself, it has to be a real kick to work with Ralph Stanley because oh, it's kind yeah. of the, uh, the the standard bearer, right? Of yeah, the, yes, uh, of the genre, he, right? he really is, and he is. Uh, gosh, I guess he's eighty uh, five now, mm -hmm. and he still tours a lot. We did a show together the night before Valentine's Day, and just his voice. There's something about to me. It really. It, it sounds ancient, not meaning his age, but I mean, sure. it, it's this timeless... Tradition. Yeah, it. yeah. And there's something with his voice, uh, the great blues player, Son House, mm -hmm. the great blues singer. There's something about both of those guys that just, you know, Ralph, he's, he's just it's totally unique mm -hmm. with his sound. And I, I call him the king of mountain soul. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So you've also had a lot of success as a songwriter. I, I have. I've been lucky. Um, George Strait's done about 14 songs, and uh, Patty Loveless has done a lot, and Gary Allen, uh, Vince Gill, Dixie Chicks, uh, Kathy Matea. Um, so I, I, I do... Uh, co-write some in Nashville with other Nashville writers or, or have the songs I've written alone. And Nashville is just, of course, such a hotbed for songwriters. Sure. I mean, there's so many great songwriters uh, there. And uh, so it's, it's an exciting time to be in Nashville as well because so many great players are constantly moving there, great songwriters. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks that were in the music business in LA and New York are moving there also, right, right. Uh, just for the the um, the ease of living mm -hmm. there. So uh, it's, it's very inspirational to be there. Right, right. Yeah. So what is your process as a songwriter? How do you how do you get started? Do you have the music first? Do you write the lyrics? Or how does it come together? Usually for me, a melody will pop in my head and I'll, I'll lay it down just at odd times, mm -hmm. the day or night. Sometimes I'll have a phrase and um, then the melody will come from that. You know, if I'll, I'll hear something conversationally or mm -hmm. read something or just think of some title and um, then the melody will follow. So it takes me a while to uh, fill in the lyrics. Right. And uh, so it's a lot quicker for me, like when I write with Robert Hunter, I'll either just give him a melody of the arrangement of the song and then he will write the verses and choruses mm -hmm. accordingly or he'll give me a lyric. And when it works right, sometimes a lyric, the melody will just automatically come out and I'll just lay it down mm -hmm. uh, 
as per his lyrics. And then uh, a few times he's given me, sometimes I write, I can only write at times under pressure when I have a, a session booked. Okay. When I, and and uh, for an example, with the North Mississippi All-Stars, I had this time booked with them in their studio in Mississippi. And when I got there, I, it, it's one of those writer's block things where sure. you don't really, you know, you try and things aren't happening. So I had a few um, ideas in mind um, and I, I had a couple of things, a couple of lyrics that, that, uh, and, and songs that Robert and I had ironed out. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I got there and we started recording that I thought, okay, this is going to turn into a whole record of songs that Robert and I mm -hmm. have are either in the process of writing or have written. And so lo and behold, in two and a half days, through also me sending Robert melodies uh, just over the internet and him sending me lyrics, we came up with 13 songs in two and a half days and recorded them. So nice. it's kind of nerve wracking, but but unfortunately that's the that's way the way it works. works yeah, that's, yeah, that's the way you do it. Right, yeah. right. So do you uh, is your approach to try to get the song to where it will stand with acoustic guitar and voice, or do you do you write with the arrangement in mind, or how uh, how fully developed do you see it as you're as you're writing the song? You know, a lot of times it the uh, players that I have will influence me too, where there's something about the whole atmosphere and the vibe of the thing that just, just makes it conducive for all of that just to come out. I'm, I'm actually gonna try to do a record um, of just mostly uh, solo acoustic guitar stuff of Robert Hunter mm -hmm. collaborations, and I'll try to do that in the next uh, six weeks or so. Oh, that'll right. be fun. So yeah, yeah, I'm looking for, I've never done a record like that, so that'll be challenging. Right, oh, that'll be great, yeah. that'll be great. Jim, thanks so much for coming Thank in. Thank you. Such Thank a pleasure you. to have you here. Thanks Thank for uh, you. doing the session here in the studio oh, we, and uh, helping the uh, sales engineers learn about the microphones well, and things. It's really a pleasure to have you we here. Had, we had so much fun. Y'all have got a great thing going here. Thank you thanks, very much. Thanks for having us. We appreciate us. it. Come back soon. I will. We'd love to have you back. Okay. Thank you. I'm Mitch Gallagher. Thanks for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute. Every heart on the floor when they hear I find wild Irish roams every town where we go they love the sound of our sweetheart calico